Okay, the, let's continue the operating cash flows. And the, the by accident, the previous uh, the video clip uh, just yeah the stopped. So I will continue uh, from the tax calculation here. So again, here tax now we fixed this tax part and tax cell with dollar sign in front of C in front of the fourteen and then EBIT and then we just drag. Now the net income is exactly the same way the apt minus tax. Then now let's drag to right side and then add back because the interest is also part of the cash flow to the investors, which is the bond investors. That's why we have to add back this interest expense again, but should be after tax, after tax because tax amount is also cash flow. So we want to use this interest times one minus tax rate. Where is tax rate? Again, here we go. Tax rate, we want to fix this tax rate. Oh. Okay. Tax rate, and then we want to fix it. So we got this interest, add back interest expense after tax. And then add back depreciation. Where is the depreciation? We don't calculate depreciation because this depreciation expense is included in the operating expense, but we can calculate it. How? The percentage of fixed asset is a depreciation, and the fixed asset is percentage of sales. So the fixed asset, 26% times sales. Now we got the fixed asset. Fixed asset is the percentage, the pre depreciation is the percentage of fixed asset. So we multiple one more time, 50% depreciation so we got this depreciation so this is depreciation should be added back added back to net income again you are using this formula this formula which is the same result as EV times one minus tax rate add back depreciation okay then let's sum up all this number so we got operating cash flows Operating cash flows 107. The finally, we got that numbers, and the cash flows in net operating working capital part. Now the net operating working capital is the net asset minus net uh, current asset minus current liability. So how do you get it? We already calculate working capital. There you go. 18% of the sales. So. 18% of sales, where, it go? where is it? 18% times the sales 260. So 48 is net operating working capital. Let's apply onto the year five. So we have this number finally. Then when we increase the net operating working capital, means we add up more net or no, more the current asset. That means increase your, the, the accounts receivable or inventory. That means cash down. So when we increase, when you increase, when you decrease this net operating working capital, means we increase the cash in, cash amount. So when you increase net operating working capital, means we purchase more inventory or we increase the accounts receivable. Mm -hmm. That means the cash down. What about the fixed asset? The same procedure with the same concept. The fixed asset now 36% times the sales. Now we got this fixed asset. Then let's stretch that to the right to the right side. Then we come up with this fixed asset. If fixed asset decreased means the company sold this fixed asset, then cash in. If the company invests more fixed asset, then cash down. Let's take a look at this. First year, the company now decreases, so increase in cash. Got it? Now let's put all these operating cash flows, so the cash flows of, the, of changes in net operating working capital, and cash flows of changes in fixed asset, and then let's stretch out. Okay, 
then we have the free cash flows for five years. But we need to calculate terminal value at the end of year five. That includes the, from the year six to forever. Why? We are calculating corporation value. That value should include the value forever because we assume that company will uh, be continuing, will be continuing, will be working forever. So here we need to use DDM model FCF times 1 plus. Now we use this gross rate, the permanent gross rate after year 5. Then divided by WEC minus again the gross rate. So we got it. That is the permanent value. That is the permanent value of this stock. Oh. This stock. Okay. Then let's sum up all the value each year. I know year one to three, four doesn't have any terminal value, but at the year five, now we have this the finer the free cash flow of the firm every year. Now let's get into this calculation here the value of the firm which is enterprise value or entire business value so how to get it mpv open the parenthesis we want to discount with WAC for this free cash flows then the value of the firm is total value the entire business is one trillion four hundred twenty-eight. So the market value of the debt and preferred stock. If the company has the debt and the preferred stock, we have to subtract from this. So let's go to wax spreadsheet. Market value of debt. We don't have preferred stock, so it should be one hundred thirty. Now, intrinsic value of the firm is now. 1,298 billion dollars. Now let's change this intrinsic value into the per share value, per share value. So the 1,298 intrinsic value divided by number of shares outstanding. Where did you get it? Here you go. 4.38, the common the outstanding shares. 4.38 billion shares. So. The intrinsic value, finally, we come up with comma stock per share is 296.44. Uh, the price, market price, comma stock per share, as of now, March 30, was, uh, we got this number here, 254.81. Then the expected gain, if we invest this the Apple stock at 254 currently traded. Now we'll expect $41 gain. Then the percentage of increase from this purchased price is 16%. It's not much attractive, but again, yeah, if, if you think, oh, you can still buy, then you can uh, make some recommendation for the investment, 16% upside potential, okay? Then this is it. This is how to calculate intrinsic value. Intrinsic value. Now, if you change this assumption like 4%, and then the intrinsic value is going to be reduced to 240 or like 4%. Even we, if we reduce 3%, and then, oh, it's going to be reduced. So this gross rate is uh, the amazing kind of, kind of manipulation factor. That's why you have to explain very clearly, okay? The WAC as well, if you calculate the WAC like 7%, what would happen? The value significantly increase. $740 intrinsic value, unrealistic. But anyway, the WAC is the only factor that affect uh, the free cash flows for the discounting process. So it's a very important factor, okay?
The tax amount also, also as well. If we increase the 35 percent, the tax average tax rate is definitely minus. Okay, so this percentage of assumption also affect a lot. If you put like 20 percent or 20 percent last year, then you can see some changes like this. Okay, so you should think about this percentage change your assumption. So. This part is manipulation part, but when you change these assumptions and variables, you have to explain clearly why. Where did you get the information? How to get that number? So after this, you will also provide this EVA, ROA, ROC, and ROE, and interest coverage ratios. Uh, I already posted the answer file on the module page. For this part, you can just use this equation. It's not difficult. It's not difficult part. You can just use this equation. And then the, the, the finish this part yourself using uh, the answer file. If you have much more uh, the, uh, the, the ratios that you, you think of very important, the ratios, then you can put more ratios. After you're finishing up this part, you also have to explain uh, the, your analysis of these ratios. Okay? So, see you in the next video clip.